Hello and welcome to Seeking Alpha Interviews. I'm Jane King at the NASDAQ Market Site in Times Square. With me today, Brett Jensen, one of our favorites, um, the uh, founder of the Biotech Forum, also Seeking Alpha contributor. And um, biotech is, is your area. So where do you see the state of the industry right now? It's an interesting, it's been an interesting year so far in 2017. We've had a good start to the year. Uh, been stuck in a very narrow trading range yeah. for such a high beta sector for about five months now because we've had merger and ac uh, acquisition activities totally died. Okay, uh, and that was like really hot at the beginning of the yeah, year. Yeah, we had three deals between uh -huh. five billion and 30 billion. We had, you know, big takeout premiums. We had one little bidding war. And then all of a sudden, everything kind of went dormant. And with that, the biotech sector has basically been in a very narrow, like, 5% range for the last, since about mid-February, which okay. is very unusual for it. It is. I mean, usually you see a lot of volatility in that yeah. Oh yeah. Area, but well, maybe, does that mean it will explode in the second half of the year, or do you see more of this? I, I think that you're going to definitely have to be a stock picker in the sector. I think what is happening is the pharma and the biotech gi giants, they do need to go ahead and replenish their pipelines, especially because the old days of raising prices on existing drugs yeah. is pretty much gone. And is that like a government thing? Or? I think <laughs> is both a government <laughs> thing and the industry is re realizing that this, this is not going to be tolerated anymore. Yeah, there's like a PR. Well, it's a PR thing, and <coughs> a lot of business models with Valiant, uh, they're coming under scrutiny, and a lot of other small players. I think the major players know that they need to go ahead and get uh, new drugs in the pipeline, because what you price an existing, uh, existing drug, you can't really keep raising the prices on that significantly, but coming out with new pro products, that's completely different. Okay, so let's hear some of your picks or things to watch as we head into the second half. I think we're going to have to watch what's happening with tax reform okay. because most of the drug giants are waiting to see whether they're going to get a tax holiday for the hundreds of billions they hold overseas because mm. that would be obviously substantial fuel for R&D, for merger ac acquisitions, stock buybacks, dividends. Uh, I don't think we're going to get any clarity on that in the third quarter. By the fourth quarter, it's either going to be we're going to be able to do this or not. Either way, we will have clarity at that point, and I think the drug giants will start making purchases then. Until then, I think the sector is going to be continue to trade in a very narrow range for the high beta sector. So it's going to be a stock picker's market. There are some really good values in the market right now. Uh, one of them, I think, belongs in every core portfolio is Celgene, uh, the biotech giant. Over the last Two and a half years, their earnings have gone up 60%. The revenues are up about 45%. The stock is trading exactly where it was two and a half years ago. Huh. So the valuation. The additional revenue and all that stuff. Hasn't matter because okay. the sentiment on biotech has been pretty negative for the last two years. Mm -hmm. Since our last peak was July 2015, we're still about 25% down from that peak. Um, so I think Celgene is a good long term. It's not going to be a home run, but it's going to be good single, double over the next few years. They should increase revenues and earnings again by about 20% over, on average over the next couple of years. Uh, they have a great uh, product portfolio, they have a great pipeline, and they fund a lot of small and mid-cap names through collaboration deals across many disease areas. So it's almost putting some money in like a, a venture capital fund. Okay. Uh, going in a little bit to smaller names that I like, uh, there's a little company called Pyrus uh, pharmaceuticals, P-I-R-S. That's the ticker, P-I-R-S. Yes, okay. it's about a $200 million market cap. We first profiled this a couple months ago when the stock was trading just under $2. It's now $4.75. We went back to it like a month ago because what's ignited their shares is signed a huge collaboration deal with AstraZeneca. They're working on very small molecule proteins that should be able to okay. help target uh, different disease areas such like anemia, oncology. But the deal with AstraZeneca provided almost $60 million up front, a lot of other sales and regulatory uh, milestones and royalties up to like $2 billion if everything works out. So obviously the, you got like the risk reward uh, profile on that one and now they're flush with cash from the upfront payment. Another uh, stock I really love long term is a little genetic testing company called Invete. It's MVTA, okay. uh, about $450, $500 mil, million dollar market cap. They do genetic testing. 
and they're growing about 150 to 200 percent year over year on revenues. Wow. They're expanding the tests they offer. They now have over 200, and they're driving the t cost per test down. A year ago, each test cost about $612, and last quarter is 359. They should be cash flow positive. To kind of show the potential of this space, the space should will go from about three to four billion annual genetic testing to about eight to ten billion, about five to six uh, years out. There is another company called Exact Sciences, E X A S. Back in late 2015, they passed ten million dollars a quarter in revenue, growing about the same way. They're now a four billion dollar market cap company. Invite passed 10 million its last quarter. Okay. It's got a 450, 500 million dollar market cap. Kind of puts a perspective on that. There's also my last uh, small cap I'd like to go ahead and highlight is a company called Dynavax Technology, DVAX. Now they've been in the news this week because they presented data at the huge oncology conference going on in Chicago, the ASCO conference that runs through today. Uh, their oncology compound, SD101, combined with Merck's Keytruda, which is an emergency blockbuster in immunotherapy, uh, achieved a amazing results, 100% response rate. It's a small sample set, but it appears to be do much better than Keytruda alone. Uh, that will now move to mid-stage trials. It's a very undervalued asset given that Donavax is probably selling for 350 million market cap. But the real exciting thing about Dynavax is their hepatitis B vaccine, which they've had a long run uh, saga with FDA for the last couple of years. They have a proof of date of uh, August 10th where this finally should be approved. And that is at least a $500 million market uh, annually just in the US. Uh, so they'll probably have to raise funding after that, but they're selling at $7 a share. Two years ago, when everyone thought this hepatitis B vaccine was going to be approved before it got delayed, it was selling at $30 a share. This is, I think this will double before the year end because I think this is going to be the, it's going to get approved this time. Okay, some exciting ones to watch in the second half of the year. So thanks so much, Brett, for coming and sharing your insights. So thank you. Always thank very you interesting. Always great to be in New York. Great. And thank you as well for joining us on Seeking Alpha Interviews. Thank you.